Greetings travelers and welcome to Traveler RPG Headquarters. You can find our Facebook group by searching our name in the Facebook search tool or find a link to in the video description below. Thank you for participating in our second annual May Day, May Day Traveler Day event. It's a day we celebrate Traveler and all its offshoots for all the fun times it's given us. I'm your host, Frank Sucardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and today I'm happy to introduce Mr. Omer Golan Joel of Stellar, Stella Gamma Publishing. Welcome, Omer. Hello. How are you? I'm doing very great right Fan now. Fantastic. How's the uh, weather in your Luckily, part of the world? It's very hot here in Israel. Uh -huh. it's, uh, yesterday it was around 31 degrees centigrade, which is, I think, 88 Fahrenheit. Yeesh. So we already turned on the air conditioner. Wow. <laughs> it's very cold where I live. <laughs> I live in the um, high mountain uh, desert, and uh, we st it's very cold at night, and uh, still pretty cold during the day. But uh, so, um, Omar, tell me, where are you from? Where did you grow up? I was born in the States, in Chicago, but I lived in Israel since the age of four. So uh, I speak both English and Hebrew very well, uh, with an accent, but who cares? Right. And... Uh, I am playing role-playing games since 1997, I think, that is 23 years. Mm -hmm. Started with the Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, later Traveler, Shadowrun, a lot of games. Did you uh, ever attend university or join the military? Uh, I, I studied at the university for quite a lot of years. I have a master's degree in geography and urban planning from Tel Aviv University and uh, a lot of other stuff that is uh, data not as a science it's called the uh, information science diploma and uh, i'm probably going to, to study professional translation diploma as well i work in translation for about uh, 10 or 20 years but uh, eventually i will have to study for my own official diploma to get better jobs mm. And um, do they have uh, do they have national service there in Israel? Yes, they have mandatory military service, but uh, for medical reasons, it was exempt. I see. Um, the reason I'm asking this is I'm kind of uh, modeling my questions after the Traveler character generation. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, it's, it's actually quite. Uh, interesting that you have you know it was written before the uh, united states moved away from the draft so you have the draft and you have uh, four year uh, military terms luckily in israel it's only three years but uh, a little less recently but uh, i know that it's based on mark miller's uh, military service in vietnam mm -hmm. so um uh do you have any hobbies aside from gaming do you um uh, enjoy sports or do fishing or hiking or anything cooking mostly and uh, herpetology that is uh, searching for uh, reptiles in the wild around my home there are a lot of them and uh, i'm probably going to get myself a better camera later to do this there is a lot of interest in wildlife here Hmm. Even so, I live in the semi-urban area. Cool. And do you have a, a favorite um, like sci-fi book or TV show or movie that you really like or that inspires you? I think my two main inspirations in, uh, in terms of space opera, at least, was Babylon 5 and uh, the Mass Effect video. Oh, mm -hmm. Both of which are grand space opera, and I think... Mass Effect is not underrated, but Valorant 5 is a bit underrated, and uh, it was wonderful. This was my introduction to space opera, originally. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, uh, I have interest also in harder, or at least harsher science fiction, uh, such as Alien and Aliens, uh, which I also like very much, and in the video game department, System Shock, for example, mm -hmm. which is quite Great old. Game. But yeah, this is shock one and two are both great games. They were supposed to create a third game, but it failed recently. So still, it was very good in inspiration for all kinds of uh, cyberpunk and harder uh, science fiction. So you mentioned that um, you started out with uh, D&D &D and then 
moved on to Shadowrun and, and Traveler. So uh, was D&D the first RPG game you played? Yes, it was the only one around in the 90s. Uh, even then, it was out of print, essentially, because the company imported it to Israel and translation it failed. Much bankrupt. So uh, part of the books were photocopied, and we had to get used books for all kinds of places. We also only had the three core books of Dungeons and Dragons uh, second edition. Hmm. So, so uh, we started with that, uh-huh. and around the turn of the century, you could already order stuff from the internet from Amazon. So we started getting other RPGs, like the third edition of Dungeons and Dragons, like Shadowrun. I also got it from a local vendor, which was a bit weird because he didn't have the shop. He sold stuff from the trunk of his car. <laughs> mobile yes, hobby he, shop. <laughs> yeah, he was selling on conventions, but otherwise I wanted to buy stuff from him. So he said, well, I'm going to this place or that place. I could, move, I could pass through your town and he uh, will buy for me. So we stopped the car and looked at the books in the, in the trunk and paid for them. That's awesome. This is how I got traveler. <laughs> so did you um tell me a little bit about what what you remember about your first um RPG experience the first time you sat down and played D&D what was your impression? It didn't last long. It was very fun, but uh, it lasted around two sessions until it fell apart, which was typical at, the, at that age and uh, at the time. So I was hooked to this despite, you know, doing it for two years for two times but two hours every time and i started dming a year later i usually dm because uh, people don't really like to dm so i feel the role it's very important this is the way i get a group me too that's uh, that's been my experience uh, it's like um there's not going to be a game unless somebody gms it and well I'm, i volunteer <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's good. Um, that's uh, I'm all you'll probably also will hear me talking about cultivating gr- uh, new new players, and uh, so that's how I do it by GMing um, and bringing. Yes, bringing new the players. way to do it. So, what what was it about the uh, about um, RPGs that got you hooked? What what drew you to the hobby and made you want more? Word creation. I think the idea that you could really create a world and the players will live in and play in and you could detail it in a, a way which will allow people to play in it is uh, very intriguing for me, very attractive. Mm-hmm. This is also what drew me to Traveler because Traveler is all about world building, actually. It's all procedural generation in the universe. And uh, making out of all the random systems, making out a story and a real setting with interesting factions and everything. That's something that uh, a lot of people have said that uh, drew them to Traveler was the world building. That's what drew me to it, too. Um, yes. So uh, after playing D&D for a while, um, you were introduced to Traveler. Uh, did you, was that something that... Um, you initiated, or is it something that you were brought into a Traveler game? No, I had to initiate it because people didn't hear about it. Mm-hmm. And still, it's not the most frequent game I could get people to play because everyone wants to play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Right yeah. now, earlier it was 3rd edition. And uh, getting people to play anything else is not very easy uh, because they're used to the gameplay loop, I see. Mm-hmm. dungeon crawling and everything but uh, once they try travelers they enjoy it very much i usually play online yes, i'm going to probably to start a game on one of the discord servers by uh, in a short time by play by post hmm. i've never done play by post um i've seen a lot of people ask for it in the in the various forums so i i, I guess it's popular still I do it quite quite a lot because it also saves the trouble of uh, time zones and everything else. Ah, uh, yeah, good point. So, um, what what is it that um, how, in, when you um host a traveler game, how do you um set it up to compete with uh D and D and and bring players over? Well, it's rules, light, science fiction essentially, because then there are 
D&D based science fiction games, but uh, Traveler gives you a more mature kind of science fiction setting uh, where you play adults. And like D&D, when you start uh, with kids who become uh, gods within a few years of in-game time. That's a good point. So, uh, and uh, so I usually sell it, you know, by it's harder science fiction. It's classic science fiction. Uh, you could modernize it, but I think it detracts a bit from it. You know, if we get later to these stars or ours, it's a bit retro-futuristic, not as retro-futuristic as uh, the original Traveler universe, but uh, still it's inspired by older media and uh, it's not all nanotech and everything which is newer. Hmm. So you say it's more classic, like, um, can, you, uh, can you give me an example? I think that uh, the old Darren Even novel is set in, the, in his uh, known space universe inspired me a bit. Mm -hmm. You know, Ringworld and uh, everything around it. But uh, Baron 5, uh, which is a bit, you know, it's, right now it's probably considered classic, mm -hmm. also was a very big inspiration for me. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, it was before the turn of the century and before a lot of new trends. But I think also the expense really helped me, and Firefly helped me to uh, market travelers players. Mm, that's a good. Uh, that's a good point. I I noticed that there does seem to be a resurgence in science fiction with the expanse and uh, Star Trek Discovery and um, uh, and so forth. Yes. Um. <clears throat> so have you? Uh, have you always? Uh, since you're the since you've been the GM, have you always uh, run your own uh, setting, or do you have a, aside from your own setting, do you have a, a favorite setting that you that you played with at first before you developed your own? I usually created simple settings of my own because uh, official universe, which I am going to play in a bit uh, later, uh, I think it's less appealing to me. Mm -hmm. On one hand, it's it's a huge and very enjoyable setting. By itself, uh, but I usually look for a smaller scale kind of setting, not something which is uh, tens of sectors of space, which on one hand, one hand is really amazing, but on the other hand, it sometimes you feel a bit insignificant in it. So, if I play in the official Traveler universe, I use uh, the Long Night uh, or the New Era, but I think the Long Night is more interesting because it's less. Explored and doesn't have the problems of the new era with universal destruction. Uh, and I prefer to create my own settings. Usually it's one subsector, two subsectors with large proof of frontier, and people can uh, go around and explore, and everything is player scale. Like it was in the official universe originally, by the mm -hmm. way. If you look at earlier adventures, it was a frontier, it was small scale, everything. Uh, so I think that. Uh, so with all due respect to the official universe, which I, I do like, I was bought a lot of stuff from it, by the way, I read a lot of stuff. Uh, I usually create my own. It's like Traveler calls for this. It calls for you to go and generate a subsector. This is what you get in, the, in book three of the classic rules. It, it's not, it's don't, it don't give you a setting. You have to go and generate a subsector and generate encounters and generate animals and everything. I, I'm with you on that. That's uh, similar to how I do it as well. Um, I've always done my own setting. Um, I, I just I use the uh, official settings for some source um, information and then just take it from there myself. Um, what's uh, so? When did you become a, a sci-fi? Well, when did you become a content creator? It was in uh, 2011 when I published Outer Veil, which is a setting for Mongoose Traveler, back when there was a license, a compatibility license with Traveler. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, again, I think I learned a lot of for things from writing it. Uh, but it's a small setting, one sector in size, a near future, which gives you a lot of frontier to explore, Everything is smaller scale. Everything is player scale. Uh, I think I didn't detail the words enough in it, but it was, again, it was my first experience in writing something professional. 
and uh, it was published by Speaker Publishing in 2011 called Outer Veil. Um, again, it was a setting book. Afterwards, I didn't publish anything for uh, quite a lot of time. I did some freelance work for other publishers, but on a smaller scale. And then in 2016, I founded Telegram Publishing. I started publishing smaller stuff. The goal was to publish this as also ours. That is, this is why we set up the company. Mm-hmm. We took, took, it took us a year to publish it because, you know, writing something at the scale and editing, it takes time, a lot of time and effort. And uh, so when you wrote These Stars Are Ours, uh, did, you, did you do that by yourself or did you have a crew? We are a team. We are a team of three people, actually. And I did a lot of the writing myself. But again, the most important thing is not only writing, it's editing. And if you have a wonderful editor, and usually it's quite a harsh editor it has to be, your product is much better later. Your book, which is edited and you get insights from more people, it gets wonderful. And um, uh, let's see, back when you back when you first started this and you had your team, uh, were you working from home or did you have an office? I'm working from home also in my so-called day job. I work in translation, editing, and content work, uh, content writing for all kinds of commercial stuff and far less interesting materials usually connected to business and law. Uh, so I have my own office at home. Originally, I had the uh, I was in a smaller apartment, so I still I work from home. I do everything from home. I also have a laptop, so I could work from a cafe or anything like that if I want. Right now, it's impossible, but uh, once again, everything will be open. I also work sometimes outside. Hmm. And so I was uh, looking at your um, catalog, and I noticed that The Stars Are Ours is an Electrum t- very Electrum title listed on DriveThru. It's a very, very popular title. What inspired you to to, uh, to create these stars or hours? I think I wanted something grand. I wanted space opera out outside everything and uh, really big space opera, big battles, big ideas, big wars. It still ended up quite a small scale around two subsectors in the book, but uh, in terms of setting it's you know you had total war ending very recently so every, everything was painted but it's war I really, actually it was a very good choice because once you have a frame of reference like that it makes everything much easier to describe also your, your characters that is you know most classic iconic traveler characters and the Cepheus engine characters served in the military so you have you served in actual total war for most of your career, all of your career, uh, unless you serve very long. Hmm. That sounds interesting. So, um, what's your favorite type of content to produce? Uh, maps, modules, charts? It's an interesting question. I like two things. I like writing rule sets, which I think I'm done with right now because I have two rule sets. One is Cepheus Enge- Light and one is uh, Sword of Cepheus. Uh, and they cover everything. So the next stuff, so the next things we talk about this later will be smaller supplements to them, mm-hmm. general supplements. But uh, I also really like building settings, inventing settings, you know, all the world building stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's very, it's the two things I like. Adventures, I'm less good in writing. In general, but I think I will also write this a bit because usually most of our all of our adventures are by other people. I once wrote some adventure material, but uh, for other publishers on very small scale. Hmm. And um, uh, let's see. Um, so, do you have uh, any bundles that's like a starter set that people can? Uh, can buy that has you know the uh, rule, the basic rule set and an adventure whatever little starter kit. We have uh, Cepheus Faster Than Light, which is free in PDF form and uh, very very cheap in print, mm-hmm. uh, which is all the basic rules from Cepheus Light, 
גיר טוורד, פאסט פליי, קונבנשן פליי, דירנס פרצלס פליי, וזה לס וורד בינינג אופצ'נס, ואין פיטליס קריירס, אבל זה עדיין משהו שאתה צריך להתחיל לעשות. אז זה רציפו סלייט, שזה לא כל כך מאוד חשוב, לא כל כך מאוד חשוב, לא כל כך מאוד חשוב. Regarding uh, settings, we have the This Stars of Ours uh, bundle, which is right now very, very cheap uh, because uh, we created a current in uh, discount, current in survival discount mm-hmm. for all our products. Uh, I'm not sure if when this podcast will, you know, interview will be uh, uh, published, if it will be still online, but still this package is very, very uh, uh, worthwhile. You get great value for money. You get all the books in one package. So uh, it's, very, uh, it's very good idea to buy it. If you want to get it in the settings, you get, simply you get everything at once, including two adventures and the core books and all the supplements. Hey, that's great. So I was looking at your, um, uh, at your product list over there on DriveThru, and you have uh, over 40 items listed. Um, just there I don't know if you have uh, other items listed on other sh- on other stores but how do you manage to be so prolific and produce so much I actually produce less than I want because I have this day job I have to work in and uh, you know publishing RPGs through PDF and even print on demand it's not something you could o- make a living from in most cases unfortunately so I have support mis- myself partly by other things uh, but I still I really like writing and uh, a lot of our products are, you know it gets ideas for small and short products which people really like uh, for example we created some third party material for uh, uh, stars without number which is another science fiction RPG uh, and this material sells very well and it's also very very useful because you know it's character generation options and a short supplement about creating more interesting worlds so uh, all of these kinds of stuff some of them I could create quite quickly and the big rule books and setting books they are the ones which take a year probably to create mm. so um, tell us what you've been up to this past year do you um, do you have a local gaming group right now I ran for a short while. a savage worlds actually and i played this letter in the savage worlds campaign but it's now uh, on hiatus until the pandemic ends mm-hmm. so uh, it's easier to get players for savage worlds unfortunately the traveler uh, it's also a very good uh, rule set and i, int- I play in two uh, play by post dungeon dragons games online i'm going to set the cephus light one I hope in a few months hmm. uh, to start playing and again a sandbox campaign and I'm trying to get people to play if you slide it's this it's not as easy as it sounds again because of people are stuck with uh, they don't want to explore new things once they get touch the dragons because it's excellent and because the gameplay loop is very simple. Mm-hmm. but I get I get uh, people to play other things I wanted I want to run shadow on I wanted to run shadow on but the problem is the rules are quite complex so uh, a lot of people don't like it I like the I like the wacky universe of shadow on mm-hmm. uh, but I could create other things and I write more than I play recently which is a bit disappointed for me but uh, is a result of the A local situation which means small role-playing community so I play online mostly hmm. do you ever um, uh, go recruit from a local hobby st- shops or uh, anything like that host a game there no it's through the internet usually hmm. through local Facebook groups because the hobby shops are quite few here it's a small community and uh, wow. you could get people through Facebook and you get people you simply know them and for quite a while also play uh, RPGs a lot of my friends play RPGs so I could get them to play a game uh, depends some people are more adventurous and get to try new things sometimes just want to run one off in something and get it get used to the system and try out things and try out board games 
sometimes we simply sit and play board games again uh, instead of uh, playing RPGs, uh, some of which are quite uh, interesting recently. No, oh, uh, what's your favorite board game? Do you have a Do you have a favorite board game? I I grew up on Talisman, which is a bit simple, but uh, we played for years uh, in my high school years. We played all the summer, all the night. For some reason, because it was the one we could get, but it's, I think it's also quite addictive, which is good. Recently, I discovered there's something called Not Alone, which is a card game. It's quite strategic. You have a starship crew stuck on a planet and an alien beast trying to hunt them. It's hard to be the alien because you have to strategize, otherwise, you fail. Uh, we played it, it was Blast. I also have the Fallout board game, which I haven't tried yet. I'm going to try it once the pandemic ends. And a lot of things like this. Also, Microscope is a very good I call it party game. It's not a role-playing game in the normal sense, but it's something also very fun to do with friends, especially when your uh, RPG session gets cancelled because people can make it. So the people who do make it could play Microscope or things like that. Oh, that's a good idea. So, um, do you have any um, conventions that you normally attend? There are about two conventions here in Israel, uh, sometimes three, and they sometimes go to them, sometimes to sell books, sometimes to play a bit, to see new materials that people are putting out. But a lot of things go online recently, more than the conventions. But by the way, the convention, the next convention is going to be online completely because of the pandemic. Mm. Um, and uh, what about production? Are you uh, what, what kind of production have you worked on over the last year? You the, mean in terms of uh, product or product yeah. work? Yeah, uh, either either. Um, like what? Just what have you been doing? Um, uh, product wise or production wise over the past year? I, I guess uh, sort of Cepheus. Yeah, sort of Cepheus took a lot of time to work on. I'm now working on a supplement for it, uh, which introduces non-human races. It's almost complete, it just needs editing. Probably will be out this week, week or the next. Uh, we are republishing a cookbook uh, one of our friends wrote, wrote, which is aimed at uh, tabletop role playing. You know, they have to eat something and not always have to order pizza. Mm. So it's very good. I know the, I know the person who wrote it. She, she cooks very well and she knows what she's writing. Uh, so I have to create new layout for it so I could publish it in print as well. Again, everything print is delayed right now because of the pandemic. Uh, there is a problem getting, getting things mailed to you right now. Uh, I also published Liberty Ship, which is a ship book for this stars of ours, but also useful for anything else. And I'm working on several supplements for Cepheus Light right now, uh, and sort of Cepheus. Uh, remind me of the name of that cookbook. Was it Castles and Casseroles? It's called Cauldrons and Casseroles. Cauldrons and Casseroles. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's it sells uh, moderately well. That is, it's a bronze bestseller. Uh -huh. uh, I think it could sell better because it fills a niche that not not a lot of products fill right now. It uh, just needs better layout, which is working on. I taught myself how to do layout, by the way, in a pro program called the Affinity Publisher. So I do much better looking books right now. In the past, I was using Word, and uh, it's far easier to work with Affinity. It looks far better. So I'm teaching myself some publishing skills along the way. Hmm, great. All right, so um, tell us more about your uh, main product. The two main products are Cepheus Light and Sword of Cepheus. Cepheus Light is a fast play science fiction game, uh, including some world building aspects, but the, the main system is 
very very lightweight and simple and uh, designed for again fast play and for uh, high adventure and some pulp adventure it could do also do uh, it's very useful very uh, versatile so you could play modern games with it quite easily espionage if you want uh, cyberpunk if you want you could also play I'm writing a cyberpunk supplement right now but you could also play quite easily a cyberpunk game with the rules as they are you could play uh, all kinds of everything which is science fiction or modern post-apocalypse you could do it with it and uh, source of Cepheus it covers the fantasy side of things including source of planet and uh, sort of sorcery sort of sandal and uh, you could uh, you could play again a wide variety of things we're creating a lot of supplements there would be a sort of planet uh, supplement for the sort of Cepheus uh, later this year uh, with all kinds of cool super tech uh, and aliens to play with and uh, again these are the two main rule books which I'm very proud of and there is uh, this stars are ours which is our set main setting uh, for which we are also planning some very very interesting products we are in the initial stages of working about uh, working on a prequel for it uh, which is also going to be very interesting when you are playing resistance fighters against alien occupation of Earth. Oh, that sounds cool. So um, let's talk about uh, Sword of Cepheus, because uh, normally, uh, I mean, your product line is mainly sci-fi. What inspired you to uh, kind of do a, san a fantasy title? It's a very good question, but I think that I saw the potential in, the, in this whole set to expand to new horizons. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write something which was sold and sold, so I, uh, eventually. And this this worked very well. It still needs some uh, improved layout and a few errata corrections, but it also be in print later. Uh, it was very fun writing it and uh, converting everything to the Cepheus uh, system and Cepheus concept of things. Cool. Um, so, uh, tell us, where can we find these, uh, these products mainly? Everything uh, in PDF is on Drive through RPG, through the Stellagama Publishing Store. And we also have some print books through Lulu. Uh, we are moving slowly everything to Drive through RPG, which we think is easier for uh, our customers to access and, and encounter. Mm -hmm. But uh, Lulu allows distribution of books through Amazon and other uh, retailers, uh, which unfortunately Drive Through RPG doesn't do right now. I hope they will do in the future. Mm. So you could, for example, get a pocket edition of uh, Cephas Light through Lulu. Oh. And you could get a print version of uh, Piracy and Privateering and a lot of stuff through there. But uh, we, will, we are working on everything moving all the print books to Travis RPG as well. Oh, great. Uh, that's uh, lulu.com, L-U-L-U.com? Yes. Cool. Um, let's see. All right, so what are your plans for this next year? You mentioned some expansions. Uh, what are you kind of focusing on? Right now I'm writing uh, short expansions for uh, The Sword of Cepheus, uh, which includes... Non humans, it will include spells, a best a new best air is, is, is a monster book, a sort of and planet, holes, a lot of a lot of uh, smaller supplements which makes the game more versatile and uh, easier to play. And I'm also working on a cyberpunk supplement for Cepheus Light, which also include the kind of a uh, near earth uh, sandbox. And uh, we are working on several other things. We have a lot of interesting ideas. Again, I mentioned the prequel to the Star Wars, Wars which I'm working on. We are trying to also create some interesting mechanics for it. Uh, we are working, with, this will be quite soon, on a UFO book for the Star Wars, Wars which will include six new ships, all uh, reticulants, it is gray alien ships. Uh, we took uh, classic UFO shapes and made uh, traveler Cepheus engine ships from them. 
Uh, this will be soon. There will be a, a stars without number version of this, which include all the gray alien uh, generation rules, which in, in Cepheus Light you could do with uh, the stars of ours, but in the uh, stars without number, they don't have rules like that right now, so we'll add them. And it's, it's going to be a very, very fun book. You know, you have UFOs, you could use them in any setting you want, including near future conspiracy, everything with deck plans and stats and everything. Wow, that's a, that's a huge amount of stuff that you've got <laughs> on your to-do list. Yes. <laughs> yes, and now that uh, I have less work because of the pandemic, I'm working uh, almost full-time on uh, Stellagam. Now's a good time to do that. So, yes. Uh, so, uh, what are your plans uh, for the next year? As far as uh, let's say the let's say the quarantine is lifted, are you gonna do you have plans to go to any conventions? Uh, I hope that uh, there will be conventions soon. Otherwise, it will be in the fall. Mm. The the conventions planned for the summer is already online, but uh, I probably go to it as well online. And there's one in the fall, and again one in the next spring. Hmm. All right. So, um, tell us, um, how can people contact you and find your products? Do you have a uh, social media or a website? We have a Facebook page. Uh, we have the Drive Soul RPG store. Um, these are two mains of main ways of contact. We have our email address, uh, which is connected to the Facebook page. Uh, but I think the Facebook page is uh, the easiest one for most people to get to, and the drive through RPG store. Great. Well, that's the end of our interview. Um, Omer, thank you for uh, sitting with us today and telling us about Stella Gamma Publishing. You're welcome. Well, I'm your host, Frank Sucardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and I've been talking with Mr. Omer Golan Joel of Stella Gamma Publishing. Again, Omer, thank you for participating in our May Day traveler event and thank you listener for joining us today that's all for now travelers until next time happy traveling <laughs>